Hey guys, this is my undying heart, and today I'm going to see what house I get sorted into. Um, so let's just go over this. I'm on the Pottermore site. Um, I knew about this when I was younger, when I was, you know, all the movies were coming out and all that, but I've never done it. Um, what brought me back to this website is uh, J.K. Rowling is going to be um, starting a new book series, and it's going to be in, uh, in the Harry Potter world, but uh, in America, so the United States. So that should be very interesting and a little different. Um, so let's just have some fun with this. Welcome to Pottermore from J.K. Rowling. Experience the Harry Potter stories like never before. Explore Harry Potter story. Key scenes from Harry Potter story are depicted through a series of beautiful illustrated interactive moments, many of which contain exclusive new writings from J.K. Rowling. Okay, so what's going on is you're expected to, you could start at year one, um, the Sorcerer's Stone, and you actually are basically wanted to um, to read the book and then you come to a certain point and then you go to this website and you um, play the little scenarios and you get some little extra extra ba background information and the more you do that um, well you don't have to read the book you could just go scene by scene by scene if you have a good memory and remember the books but uh, the reason for promoting you to do this stuff is so that you um, earn points for your house and at the end of the year um, you and thousands or millions of other players that are in the same house so let's say we're sorted into Gryffindor and uh, all the Gryffindor people have the most points and you can get points from doing these little scenarios or you could get them from dueling other people um, actual people online are making potions and stuff like that and it's just a fun like role-playing LARP type thing that a lot of people like to do I'm not gonna get into any of that I'm just solely here just to see what uh what the sorting hat has in store for me and just play around alright so this is start your journey become a student at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry Get sorted by the Sorting Hat, brew potions, and challenge other students to Wizard's Duel to help your house in win the Pottermore House Cup. Okay, so that's basically what I just said. So we're going to begin. Alright guys, so I have my information filled out. So I am Thornsnitch8016. If you guys want to friend me on this website, if you choose to do so, to make your own uh, account. So we're going to sign in. Okay, so here's a little map of the Harry Potter stuff. Explore Harry Potter's story and discover new writings from J.K. Rowling. Okay, so become a student at Hogwarts School of Wizardry and Witchcraft. So that's what we're here for. That's what we really want to do. And we're going to do that. To start your journey, you will need, you will need some wizard money from your Gringotts Vault a pet and a wand to be sorted into one of four, the four Hogwarts houses. Start by checking your vault at Gringotts Wizarding Bank. Okay, let's go to the Wizarding Bank. This has some music going. Gringotts Wizarding Bank. Thorn Snitch 8016's vault. Unlock your vault. Witches and wizards store their money in Gringotts Wizarding Bank. The bank, run by goblins, towers over the other shops with its snowy white facade and bronze guarded doors. Gringotts vaults are buried deep below its main hall, accessed by taking bumpy speedy cart rides through the rocky underground caverns. There are a few safer places in the wizarding world than Gringotts Wizarding Bank. So we start off with 500 galleons. In the books and in the movies this is a lot a lot of gold. 
Um, on this website, I believe it's not that much. It is, but it isn't. All right, and I don't know how you get more, maybe by doing tasks, or maybe actually by pulling out your credit card and buying them. That's kind of how most games are nowadays. Even though this is kind of more like an audio book type thing. Um, you can spend your galleons in Diagon Alley at some of the most fascinating wizarding shops in the world. The gold ones are galleons. 17 silver sickles to a galleon. And 29 knuts to a sickle. It's easy enough by Hagrid. Okay. So we have that now, so we're going to click on the Pottermore to return to our homepage. And now we're going to go to Diagon Alley to buy some of our stuff. Let's see what kind of music they have here. Okay, well that's a little loud, so that's why I have it muted. Um, first year's shopping list. Welcome to Diagon Alley, home to some of the fascinating wizarding shops. Click your shopping list. Okay, some of the items on your shopping list have been bought for you and placed in your trunk. You only require a pet and a wand to proceed to the sorting ceremony. You can buy the other items on your list now or as you need them. Okay, so we're just going to buy everything. That'll take a little while, but... It'll kind of give you guys an example of what this game has to offer. Um, again, I use the word game a little lightly and loosely. Uh, this is more of like an interactive, um, just like a like a role-playing thing, really. And like I said, I'm not really into role-playing, but um, I want to see what I'm sorted into, okay? Okay, so, uniform. First year students will require... Three sets of plain work robes, black. One plain pointed hat, black for day wear. One pair of protective gloves, dragon hide or similar. One winter cloak, black silver fastenings. Please note that all pupils' clothes should carry name tags. Well, that would make sense since everybody's wearing the same stuff, right? Okay. Other equipment, one wand, one cauldron, pewter standard size, two. One set glass files or crystal files, um, one telescope, and one set of brass seals. Students may also bring an owl or a cat or a toad. I think we all know which one I will choose. Parents are reminded that first years are not allowed their own broomsticks. No firebolt for me. Bahumbug. Okay. So buy a pet magical menagerie or Ilops Al Emporium. Your pet will become your Pottermore.com profile picture. Alrighty. So this is Ilops Al Emporium and Magical Menagerie. Okay. So you got a barn owl, a brown owl. A tawny owl, a screech owl, black cat, ginger cat, Siamese cat, tabby cat, white cat. I like the way this white cat looks. Um, this ginger cat isn't quite as fat as Mikachu, but I think under the right ownership, I could fatten him up some. Give him some butterball donuts. Okay, so more more pets here are the toads. A common toad, a crested toad, harlequin toad. Western Green Toad, and a Natterjack Toad. Yeah, I'm not a reptilian fan, so I'm just not going to do that. I know a lot of you are, and that's okay. So why are some of these more expensive? I'm not quite sure. This one has blue eyes. All right, we're going to buy us a Ginger Cat. It's going to cost... Ginger Cats are allowed at Hogwarts to keep students company throughout their studies. And we're going to name him Mikachu and get him fat. Okay. You need a wand to cast spells and brew potions. Find out which wand will choose you by visiting all vanders at the far side of Diagon Alley. So go back to Diagon Alley. Alright guys, so we're at Diagon Alley. And you can see in the back we got Gringotts Wizarding Bank. To the left of that is Madame Malkin's Florine Fortecue's Ice Cream Parlor. Wysik Trays, Wizarding Equipment, Apothecary, and Patagues Cauldron Shop. And to the right we have 
Elop's Al Emporium and Magical Menagerie, which were we just bought Mikachu. Um, this one is Quality Quidditch Supplies. And this one is Flourish and Blots. That's where we will buy our books. And then Ollivander's is where? Oh, Diagon Alley Southside. What is this? Daily Profit, Wiz Hard Books, Second Hand Robes, Ollivanders, there it is, Gamble and Japes, and Thwill, Twill Fit and Tattings. Sorry about that. I'm probably going to butcher a lot of these words. Um, I haven't read the Harry Potter books in a long time, and I'm not uh, from England, so let's go to Ollivanders. Ollivanders. Bespoke Wand Selector. Okay, in response to overwhelming demand, Mr. Ollivander, world famous wand maker, has created a means of wands allocating, or more accurately, wizard selection, involving nothing more than seven simple questions. Give honest answers to these inquiries, and Mr. Ollivander will be able to tell you which of his handcrafted wands would most likely to call you you master or mistress. Certain combinations of wands and core are more unusual than others, but you can rest assured that if you have given truthful responses to Mr. Ollivander's carefully constructed questionnaire, you and your selected wand will enjoy a long and fruitful association. I'm probably going to get something like frog butt hair and mixed in with a uh, swamp wood tree uh, twig or something like that but we'll see strict rules govern wand trade so a personal visit to Ollivander's wand shop will still be necessary if you would like to take a physical possession of the wand that has chosen you let your wand choose you okay to ensure we find the perfect wand for you it's very important that you answer the following questions honestly First of all, would you describe yourself as short for your age, average height for your age, tall for your age? Well, I'm not tall. I'm not really short. I'm average. All right. And we're going to answer truthfully. Um, I have dark brown eyes. So this is what our eye color is. Was the day on which you were born an odd number or an even number? I was born on the 25th. So that is an odd number. Next question. Do you most pride yourself on your determination, imagination, resilience, intelligence, originality, optimism, or kindness? Okay, so I would have to do kindness or imagination. Which one do I pride myself in, though? Well, I love my imagination but I pride myself probably more in kindness. Um, I like being a kind person. So let's do that. Traveling alone down a deserted road, you reach a crossroads. Do you continue left towards the sea, ahead towards the forest, or right towards the castle? Hmm. I like the ocean, I love the forest, and I like castles. So this is a little tricky for me. Uh, the castle's going uphill, so let's not do that one. I don't want to break a sweat today. So we're going to go ahead towards the forest. Do you most fear the darkness, fire, heights? Small spaces or isolation. I rather like isolation. Fire is annoying, but I'm not as scared of it. Darkness. Things do go bump in the night, but Mikachu's there to protect me, right? Heights and small spaces. Those are the two that really eke me out. Um, I really don't like either one, but I always feel like I'm going to suffocate to death when I'm in small places and I always feel like I have no control when I'm up in 
high on high areas. Uh, but if I had to choose, probably be small spaces. I really, I'm claustrophobic, so now you guys know something new about me. If you guys are going to kidnap me and torture me. Um, in a chest of magical artifacts, which would you choose? Select an artifact. The dusty bottle. Ooh, that sounds fun. The old black glove. Uh, I don't know if it's that Michael Jackson's. The golden key. The ornate mirror. Ooh, I could look at myself and me could chew through the mirror. The silver dagger. The glittering jewel. Or the bound up scroll. Okay, so the bound up scroll could be like an inheritance or a map. The key could be, I don't know, something. I mean, at least we could sell it for gold, right? It's golden. Dusty ball, maybe there's a genie in there. I don't know. The black glove, maybe you can dance like Michael Jackson. The glittering jewel, we could sell that for a lot of money. Um, but we don't know what kind of jewel. It could be a cheap, crappy one. The ornate mirror, maybe it's a magic mirror. Uh, but you know I'm a guy, so I'm going to go with the silver dagger. And it's silver, so that's cool. Your selections are average height, dark brown eyes, an odd number, kindness, continue towards the forest, small spaces, and a silver dagger. That is it. Get your wand. Row wand with dragon core. Ooh, 12 and a half inches, quite flexible. Nice. Hopefully I don't break it though if it's flexible. I don't want to be eating or barfing out slugs like Ron Weasley. That will be seven galleons, please. Thank you for your payment. Okay. So that's pretty cool. I got a Rowan with Dragon Core. I don't even know what Rowan means. Um, I'll take a pause here and I'll go research that just really quick. Okay, so Rowan is actually an ash tree that's in Europe. It often has little berries on it. So we have an ash made um, wand and with the dragon core. That's pretty cool. Alright, when you're ready, you can attend the sorting ceremony in the Great Hall. Okay, so we're not quite done because we're going to go buy some books. Remember, we got this shopping list here. Okay, so first off, we need The Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1 by Miranda Goshock, A History of Magic by Bethilda, by Bethilda Bagshot, Magical Theory by Aldebert Waffling, A Beginner's Guide to Transfiguration by Emmerich Switch, 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi by Philidia Spore, Magical Drafts and Potions by Arsenis Jigger, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them by Newt Scamander. The Dark Forces, A Guide to Self-Protection by Quentin Trimble. Okay, so that's quite of a big list here, but we're going to go buy some right now. Okay, History of Magic, Standard Book of Spells, Magical Theory, Beginner Guides. True. Okay, so when you go to Flourish and Blots. This is where they stuck that little journal into uh, Jenny Weasley's uh, cauldron, if you guys remember. Okay. So I think we should just buy some of these. Standard Book of Spells, Grade 1. History of Magic. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Okay, and I have forgotten some of these, so let's look at our shopping list real quick. We need Magical Theory, 1,000 Magical Herbs and Fungi, Magical Drafts and Potions. Okay. Where is Magical Theory? I think that was one of them. Alright, let's check this shopping list one more time. 
the dark force is a guide to self-protection. Okay. So is all of these on the first page, actually. So you guys do that on your own. Now you know. And you don't have to look back at all of them. Okay, so we do need one more thing. We need the cauldron. A Peter Standard Size number two. Okay, so let's go to the cauldron store. We can go back to Diagon Alley. And we're going to go to Pettigue's Cauldron Shop. And I believe you can buy the uh, better cauldrons. They're all size twos, as you can see. Um, we got the pewter, that's all we need. And I think basically you could cook potions a little quicker. Um, we could be a little, uh, all sizes, copper, brass, pewter, silver, south stirring, castle. Oh, let's just buy this one. Shoot, we're not even going to be really playing that hardcore anyways, right? I'm not a role player, so let's just buy this. I didn't even read this. So the pewter cauldron size 2. This is an ideal starter cauldron as used by first year students at Hogwarts. It's perfect for brewing a wide range of potions and carrying books to class. Please note, depending on how the potion is made, some cauldrons are faster at brewing than others. Okay. Okay, so maybe maybe this one's faster than uh than this one at brewing uh Hogwarts or something. I don't know. Um Okay, so now we're going to go to the Great Hall, and we're going to get sorted. So this is it. The Sorting Hat is about to decide which house you will be joining. Once sorted, you can collect house points and compete for the House Cup. And if you're feeling confident, you can duel with other students. Answer truthfully. After all, the Hat's decision is final. Good luck. So that was J.K. Rowling. Welcome to the Hogwarts. The four houses are called Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Each house has its own noble history, and each has produced outstanding witches and wizards. While you are at Hogwarts, your triumphs will earn you house points, while any rule breaking will lose house points. At the end of the year, the houses with the most points is awarded the House Cup, a great honor. I hope each of you will be a credit to whichever house becomes yours. Professor McGonagall, please answer the questions that follow as honestly as you can to make sure you are sorted into the right house for you. Okay. How do you like to be known to history? Okay. The wise, the good, the great, too, the bold the wise okay I like being intelligent I like being good so what would we'd be called Andrew the good Andrew the great I kind of like how that sounds Andrew the bold Andrew the wise Andrew the good or Andrew the great I don't want to spend too much time here and bore you guys but hey I'm getting sorted right take your own turn I like purple, so let's go with Andrew the Great. Yes, please proceed. Please select one of the options below. The violin. I love violins. The trumpet. It's probably what my girlfriend would choose. The piano. Pianos I also love. The drum. Eh, I could take it or leave it. I like the violin though, so let's select that one. Yes. Drag the options below into the correct order. Okay. Merlin's book. Oh, wait. Here's question three. A troll has gone berserk in the headmaster's study at Hogwarts. It's about to smash, crush, and tear several irreplaceable items and treasures, including a cure for dragon pox, which the headmaster has nearly perfected. Student record records going back to 1,000 years and a mysterious handwritten book full of strange runes believed to have belonged to Merlin. 
in which order would you rescue these objects from the Trolls Club? If you could. Merlin's book number one. I didn't even have to think about that. I could really care about student records, to be honest. And uh, Dragon Pox. So, that was quick and easy. The Dragon Pox wasn't even ready yet, so if it was if it was completed, I probably would have chose that first. If you could have any power, which would you choose? The power to read minds. Okay, so Andrew the Great can read minds. He could go invisible. He could be superhuman strong. Power to speak to Mikachu. That'd be kind of cool. I'd like to talk to Mikachu. The power to change the past. The power to change your appearance at will. The power to read minds. Hmm. The power to change the past. I'd have to choose. Sorry, Mikachu. You're just going to have to be my fat chubby buddy that gets petted. All right. Late night, walking alone down the street, you hear a peculiar cry that you believe to have magical sources. That you believe to have a magical source. Do you proceed with caution, keeping one hand over your concealed wand and eye out for any disturbance? Draw your wand and try to discover the source of the noise. Draw your wand and stand your ground. Withdraw into the shadows and wait for developments, while mentally reviewing the most appropriate defenses and offensive spells should trouble occur. Mm, so number one is kind of me. Proceed with caution, keeping one hand on your concealed wand and an eye out for disturbance. It's probably what I would select. I don't know, there's one more that sounded like me. Draw your wand and stand your ground. That's another one that sounds like me. Um, let's choose this first one. Moon or stars? Oh god, I love the night sky. It's my favorite thing in the world. Uh, what do I like looking at? The moon or the stars? When I was little, we had the Milky Way. And I used to love looking at the Milky Way. And so I would guess that would be more so the stars than the moon. So we'll select that. Heads or tails? Hmm. Dragon tail? We did get the dragon core, remember? Or the wizarding hat. We'll go with the dragon tail. Are you sure? Yes, please. Just <laughs> the sorting hat has placed you in Slytherin. Now let J.K. Rowling tell you about Slytherin. <laughs> oh my god. Get to chill with my homeboy, Malfoy. Maybe his dad will give me a, a house elf. That'd be cool. And I'll get some cool new brooms for the Quidditch team and stuff through uh, Malfoy. Uh, rich friends, pretty cool. Read your welcome message. Congratulations, I'm Prefect Gemma Farley, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Slytherin House. Our emblem is the serpent, the wisest of creatures. Our house colors are emerald green and silver, and our common room lies behind the concealed entrance down in the dungeons. As you'll see, its window looks out into the depths of the Hogwarts lake. We often see the giant squid swishing by and sometimes more interesting creatures. We like to feel that our hangout has the aura of mysterious underwater shipwreck. Well, that's pretty cool. Ha now, there are a few things you should know about Slytherin and a few you should forget. <laughs> Firstly, let's dispel a few myths. You might have heard rumors at Slytherin House that we're all into dark arts and we'll only talk to you if your great-grandfather was a famous wizard and rubbish like that. Well, you don't want to believe everything you hear from competing houses. 
I'm not denying that we've produced our share of dark wizards, but so have the other three houses. They just don't like admitting it. And yes, we have traditionally tended to take students who become from long lines of witches and wizards. Yeah, because I'm a pimp. But nowadays, you'll find plenty of people in Slytherin House who have at least one muggle parent. Ooh, you filthy muggles. Here's a little known fact that the other three houses don't bring up much. Merlin was a Slytherin. Yeah! Yes, Merlin himself. The most famous wizard in history. He learned all he knew in this very house. Do you want to follow in the footsteps of Merlin? Heck yeah. Or would you rather sit at the old desk of that illustrious ex-Hufflepuff, Eglinton Puffet, inventor of self-soaping dishcloth? <laughs> oh, she's Merlin for sure. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sure some people want to be Hufflepuffs and... Following the footsteps of uh, self-soaping dishcloth. <laughs> uh, maybe they want to be a housewife or a house dad. I didn't think so. But that's enough about what we're not. Let's talk about what we are. Which is the coolest and edgiest house in the school. Heck yeah. We play to win because we are we care about the honor and traditions of Slytherin. We also get respect from our fellow students. Yes, some of that respect might be tinged with fear because of our dark reputation. But you know what? It can be fun. Having a reputation for walking on the wild side. Chuck out a few hints that you've got access to a whole library of curses and see whether anyone feels like nicking your pencil case. Heck yeah, but we're not bad people. We're like our emblem, the snake, sleek, powerful, and frequently misunderstood. For instance, we Slytherins look after our own, which is more than you can say for Ravenclaw. Apart from being the biggest bunch of swats you ever met, Ravenclaws are famous for clamoring over each other to get good marks, whereas we Slytherins are brothers. The corridors of Hogwarts can throw up surprises for the unwary. And you'll be glad you've got the serpents on your side as you move around the school. As far as we're concerned, once you become a snake, you're one of ours. One of the elite. Heck yeah, that's me. Andrew the Great, remember? Because you know what Salazar Slytherin looked for in his chosen students. The seeds of greatness. Ah, see? <laughs> the great. You've been chosen by this house because you've got the potential to be great. In the true sense of the word. Alright. You might see a couple of people hanging around the common room whom you might not think are destined for anything special. Well, keep that to yourself. If the sorting hat put them there, put them here, there's something great about them. And don't you forget it. And talking of people who aren't destined for greatness, I haven't mentioned the Gryffindors. Ooh, our enemy. Now, a lot of people say that Slytherins and Gryffindors represent two sides of the same coin. Personally, I think Gryffindor are nothing more than wannabe Slytherins. <laughs> oh, mind you, some people say that Salazar Slytherin and Godric Gryffindor prize the same kinds of students. Okay. So perhaps we are more similar than we like to think. But that doesn't mean that we cozy up with the Gryffindors. They like beating us only slightly less than we like beating them. A few more things you might need to know. Our house ghost is Bloody Baron. Ooh. If you get on the right side of him, he'll sometimes agree to frighten people for you. Just don't ask him how he got bloodstained he doesn't like it okay the password to the common room changes every fortnight keep an eye on the notice board never bring anyone from another house into our common room 
or tell them our password. No outsider has entered it for more than seven centuries. Well, I think that's all for now. I'm sure you'll like our dormitories. We sleep in an ancient four posters with green silk hangings and bedspreads embroidered with silver thread. Medieval tapestries depicting the adventures of famous Slytherins cover the walls and the silver lanterns hang from the ceilings. You'll sleep well. It's very soothing. Listening to the lake water lapping against the windows at night. And I guess sleeping in a dungeon would be pretty cool too. I mean that as in like nice and cool and not hot. Alright. So what do we do from here? Okay, so I'm sort of into Slytherin. I guess we go back to the um, Pottermore site. And uh, this is where you can start. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And I'll just do this. Uh... Oh, I guess they want us to buy their books. They're saying, hey, buy our books right now. Here you can read a summary of the book you are currently exploring. The yellow text indicates the next part of the story. Click on the yellow text when you're ready. The Boy Who Lived Chapter 1, The Boy Who Lived Okay, remember when you're doing this, it's best to read the book. Um, so, you'd read the book up to this point, up to the private drive, and then um, you would pause your reading, and you would uh, play on this website for a minute. Chapter 1, The Boy Who Lived Mr. and Mrs. Dursley of number 4, Privet Drive, were proud to say that they were perfectly normal. Thank you very much. They were the last people you'd expect to be involved in anything strange or mysterious because they just didn't hold such hold with such nonsense. Okay. This is a moment, an interactive scene from Harry Potter's story. Double click or use the arrow keys to move through the next layer of the scene. Number 4, Privet Drive. When Mr. and Mrs. Dursley woke up on the dull gray Tuesday, our story starts. There was nothing about the cloudy sky outside to suggest that stra strange and mysterious things would soon be happening all over the country. Okay. You've discovered number four Privet Drive by J.K. Rowling. Congratulations, you've unlocked a new material from J.K. Rowling in which she reveals the inspiration behind the Dursley's home. Look out for more new writings from the author in the hanging signs on the left-hand side of your page, marked with a quill. Okay, so this is actually on the right side of our page, not on the left, thank you very much. I think there's only one here. I can't. You, usually you click on random things and they'll do like what we just saw. Um, but we could read this one and then I'll probably stop the video because this is a lot of reading and you guys can do it on your own. Number four, Pervert Drive. Pervert Drive is located a little wingling, winging in Surrey, England. Similarly styled house lined the neat street. It's quite it's quiet and distinctly unimaginable place. After Harry Potter's parents are killed by Voldemort, Albus Dumbledore arranges for Harry to live at Number Four Privet Drive with his relatives, the Dursleys, his aunt Petunia, Uncle Vernon, and cousin Dudley. J.K. Rowling thoughts: The name of the street where the Dursleys live is a reference to that most suburban plant. The privet bush, which makes neat hedges around many English gardens. I like the, associa the association with both suburbia and enclosure. The Dursleys being so smugly middle class and so determinedly separate from the wizarding world, the name of their area is Little Winging, which again sounds appropriately periorical and sniffy. Winging being a colloquial term for complaining or whining in British English. 
although I described the Dursley's house as big and square, as befitted Uncle Vernon's status as a company director, whenever I wrote about it, I was unconsciously visualizing the second house I lived in as a child, which on the contrary was a rather small three-bedroom house in the suburb of Winterbourne, near Bristol. I first become, became conscious of this when I entered the number four privet drive that had been built at Leavesden Studios and found myself in an exact replica of my old house, down to the position of the cupboard under the stairs and the precise location of each room. As I had never described my old home to the set designer, director, co- or producer, this was yet another of the unsettling experiences that filming the Potter books has brought me. For no very good reason, I have never been fond of the number four, which has always struck me as a rather hard and unforgiving number, which is why I slapped it on the Dursley's front door. <laughs> J.K. Rowling. All right, so that's pretty cool. All right, so now you could go over because it's highlighted yellow and you can go to the next one but we're not going to do that right now guys i'm going to sign off here i hope you guys enjoyed this go to pottermore.com if you guys want to see what wizarding um house you go into and remember you guys could add me as a friend i've already forgot my name um let's see if we can find oh thorn snitch 8016 if you guys want to friend me it has a picture of Mikachu on it in green because I am House Slytherin. Oh yeah, big bad Malfoy's team right there. But remember, Merlin is from Slytherin. All right, have a good night or a good day, guys. Enjoy this and have fun.